this video we're going to do a few example shock and impact tests. We're going to throw it off a one-story garage parking lot and then do some drop testing from a couple feet in our lab downstairs. Then we're going to bring all the data into the Slamstick lab and show you some features in our free analysis software. Let's get started. Okay, ready? Here we go. Check out the data. Now let's take a look at the shock data we recorded from our shock test. To start the SlamStick lab, simply double click the executable. The data stored on the SlamStick will be arranged in the data folder and it's arranged by date. I've already copied the files onto our computer here and renamed them. Let's first look at the recording when we threw it off the parking garage. We're going to look at the 2000G version. Now you see in this main window, there's four different tabs separated of the four different sensors. The triaxial main accelerometer, the triaxial DC response accelerometer, and the pressure and temperature sensor. It also, in this main window, shows how many samples are in the recording, and then it shows the cursor position in the plot which has the UTC time, which is the Greenwich Mean Time, and then the X and Y position in the plot. Let's zoom in on that impact when we threw it off the roof just by simply dragging over the plot window. First thing that jumps out at you is this logarithmic decay. And this occurred because the 2000G accelerometer saw an acceleration that exceeded that measurement range. Whenever you see this decay, that means that you have an acceleration event that exceeded the measurement range of your unit. And so you'll need a higher measurement range of a different slam stick, or you might need to add some mechanical damping to your system. We zoom in a little further though, you'll see that the initial impact with the ground when the box broke apart, the slam stick was able to record. It was just that when the top of the box hit the pavement that exceed that 2000 Gs. This does highlight how robust these slam sticks are. We look at the pressure sensor, we see that there is a change in pressure when we threw it off the roof. This is interesting. We can calculate altitude from that by going data, display units, and display altitude as feet. You can also change units in temperature and acceleration as well. And now this calculation and change of altitude is roughly 15 feet, which corresponds to the height of that parking garage. Now let's take a look at the data from those drop tests we did inside. Again, we'll look at the 2000G accelerometer. Let's zoom in on that first drop where we where it landed on a padded area of the pallet. And let's compare this data to the 200G slam stick C. Now we'll zoom in on that first drop for the slam stick C. Just compare these two files side by side here. For the SLAM 6C that has the 200G MEMS accelerometer, it picks up that 50G peak in the Y axis, and that same peak is picked up by the 2000G SLAM stick X. Uh, you know, they're pretty similar acceleration amplitudes, but they're a little different because they're different areas of the box. Now if we zoom out though and take a look at the third drop, this third drop was uh, not on a padded area of the pallet, so it is a little bit shorter of a duration event. And I just want to highlight how important the sample rate is when you're doing shock testing. So if we zoom in further on the second of these little uh, shock events here. You see this on the right hand side, the SLAM 6C is sampling at 3200 samples per second, which is still pretty fast, but it's not quite fast enough to pick off the peak. You see between these two data points, that's when the actual peak event occurred, that the SLAM 6X that was sampling at 20,000 samples per second was able to pick up. 
And because it wasn't sampling fast enough, you might think that your recorder saw a 100G event, but in fact it saw maybe even five times as much that. So it's really important to look at sample rate when you're doing shock testing. There's other products out there that don't sample uh, nearly fast enough for shock testing. So something else I want to highlight is the synchronization between these two units. We're in the slam stick C, we're 16.8 seconds into the test, and the slam stick X, we're 16.1 seconds. And that's just because I pressed the button at different times. But if you look on the bottom of the screen here, it shows the time of day of these events. And the slam stick X clock thinks it's April 29th, 19 hours, 56 minutes, and 30.1 seconds at this peak event where the slam 6 c thinks it's 19 hours, 56 minutes, 29.8 seconds. So it's off by about 3 tenths of a second. So the synchronization will get close for each unit, but you might be off by uh, a couple, couple tenths of a second. Still pretty good. Now if you ever want to check your recording properties, you can double check what the sample rate of your sensors were. In this dialog box, you see the file properties, recording properties, shows you which sensors are on the device, and then also highlights the channel information, which includes sample rate for each channel and the max and min values and when they occurred. You can also see some information about your device and the calibration that was applied to generate your recording. So please go download the software on the website. The full version is available for free, as well as these example recordings so you can try out and see how easy the software is to use, but also how robust these products are. In the next video, we'll look at some vibration testing and do some analysis in the Slamstick lab, including an FFT and a PSD and spectrogram.